Okay, we'll start with Daniel. I know his teammate Ross will be here momentarily, and then we'll join, be joined by Kyle Bush shortly thereafter. If you have a question for Daniel, please raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. And who wants to start us off here? We'll go with, uh, start with Zach. Zach Sternial of NASCAR.com. Daniel, heading into uh, your third year with Trackhouse, but kind of the second year of this iteration of the company, wh where are the expectations after such a successful year that you and Ross both had uh, in 2022? Um, well, the expectations are, are definitely higher than last year. You know, last year, I think that, that, uh, that, that we were working very hard uh, and obviously, we didn't really knew where that was going to take us, and we we're hoping that it was going to take us somewhere good, but but without really knowing uh, many things. And I feel like now uh, it's a little bit different because uh, obviously we know that we're capable of doing. Uh, we know that we're capable of winning races, and we're capable of of, uh, of racing with uh, with some of the teams that they've been doing it for a long time. So um, it's fun. With that being said, you know, it's very, very important not to feel entitled. You know, it's very, very easy to do that. Um, you know, I think, in my opinion, it's the worst thing you can do. So uh, we have to go out there and, uh, and just continue to do the work. Um, because, in my opinion, if we, if we do exactly the same thing that we did last year, it won't be good enough. Everyone is always evolving. So uh, we have to continue to work and, uh, and, um, and show up every weekend uh, with the best we can be. And what, what was your personal experience with this event last year and just the atmosphere that, came, that comes along with it? Um, everything that, that goes around to it, uh, it seems like there's a lot, lot of excitement. It's better. It's better, no? Can you repeat the question? I was just not paying attention. I, I, you know, I get it. <laughs> what, what was your experience with the atmosphere of this event last year and how important is it that we're back here a second year uh, improving on it? Yeah, I mean, it's... Last year, honestly, was probably the most amazing event I have ever been part of. Uh, NASCAR, you guys, the media, and the teams, they knock out of the park. Uh, the event was unbelievable. Uh, the fans were super amazing. Uh, the energy was unbelievable as well. I have never felt, you know, so much excitement of the fans in driver introduction, like we did, you know, one year ago. So it was it was quite special, and uh, and the, spect the expectations are obviously high for this second time. And obviously, on top of all this, you know, for me, racing here in uh, in LA is it's almost like racing at home. You know, there, there there is a lot of a lot of Hispanics here, so it's a uh, it's extra exciting for me. And uh, and obviously, you know, you know. A big smile for me uh, racing here that I can call uh, almost home. Go to Jerry, then Jordan, then Bob. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires. Uh, I've got one for both of y'all, and I've got one for Ross. Uh, so just basically, are you guys ready to start the season? Is the off, the off season's over? Are y'all glad that it is, and y'all are getting back in the race cars at this point? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> a man, a few words. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I personally, honestly, I had the best, the best of season I ever had. You know, normally in the past, I have always had to deal with either moving from one team to another or people or sponsors or things of that nature. And, uh, and this off season was actually the first time ever that I was able to, to really disconnect from racing for a few weeks. And... And that really made me recharge my batteries 110%. So um, it was it was very very good for me to take that time off. And uh, and and we we got back in January excited again to go to go to go fight again. Uh, because you know doesn't matter what they tell you, everyone in October is tired. Is 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 getting you know is getting exhausted. So uh, it, it was for me very important to to be able to take that time and and, and go at it again. And Ross, early, obviously, uh, early this week, they, the official rule came out on your move. Any thoughts that uh, you want to talk about that? I'm glad I don't have to, have to do it again. I mean, it was the longest wreck <laughs> of my life. Um, it was just really successful, but I have no desires to ever do that again. So, um, and then selfishly, I'm glad I get to be the only one, you know, to go down the history that ever 
successfully did it where it really it really mattered and it and it really paid off. Jordan, feels better, eh? Just just, just go here ahead, whenever bro. you can, man. Say that into the microphone. I like to be high. Three chi does wonders. <laughs> Jordan Bianchi, the athletic drug test, three o'clock. This question is for Kyle. Kyle, uh, this event, uh, this format, eliminations, uh, shorter field, this track, could this be a points race and evolve from just being an exhibition? Um, I mean, it can, sure. Uh, we do it at Bristol, obviously. You've got heat races uh, there, and then you lead into a feature and things like that. So uh, it certainly could, but I feel like what it is and the way the format was designed initially when we came, when we came here last year and the way the show was, was, uh, you know, super enticing uh, for the fans. I felt like it was really good for the drivers that hit it, that were up front most of the time, like myself and Logano, Reddick, um, you know, where we did a good job early on in the weekend, practice, qualifying, everything, and you just kind of set yourself up and uh, was able to stay up front. So um, I don't know that it needs to be a points race, but it certainly could be. Go to Bob. Uh, Bob Hockers, Fox Sports. For Ross, do you is there any sense of pride that NASCAR made a rule on a move that you made, that you did? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. I have uh, a lot. Of pride? No, I have a lot of rules. <laughs> I got two last year, so I mean that's a good start. I'm at, least at, five. at your age, you should be ahead of me. <laughs> I, it is. It is. I am proud. Uh, I was proud of Indy that I was able to, to take advantage of it like I did. Um, looking back, it, both neither one of them were planned. So, um, Indy I just, was? <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I like to remember things better than they were. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of it. I don't ever want to do it again, though. Go to John. Thank you. JohnNewBeHeavy.com. Daniel, following up on a comment you made earlier, I know that this is important from a racing perspective, getting some reps in before the season, but how important is it to have that party atmosphere for the fans and growing the sport? Oh, it's definitely very important. Um, I think that uh, this is a venue like no other, really. You know, we, we are racing in a such a historical place uh, that, uh, that we get to put a, a show on. I mean, just walking, walking through the building, you know, all we see is history, you know, the, the, all the major events that have taken place here. So it's, it's quite special. Um, I personally feel that the first time was a tremendous success. That's why we're here again. And, um, and the expectations are high again. So uh, I think we're going to see another amazing event put together by NASCAR and by you guys and, uh, and, and all, the, all the race teams out there. So uh, excited to... to to start the season in a in a in a in a place like uh, the LA Coliseum. Zach. Zach Sternil of NASCAR.com. Kyle, I'm curious. Was this off season any, any different for you than prior off seasons? Just with uh, having to change, uh, obviously from JGR to RCR, but also converting KBM to a Chevrolet team as well. Yeah, it was uh, very busy. Um, so I heard Suarez when I walked in talking about how he got a chance to be off and not have to worry about much and recharge his batteries. Uh, not quite the same here, you know, obviously just changing teams and, and getting into the system and working within uh, a lot of the RCR guys and kind of understanding how they do it and what they do uh, the Chevy way, as well as uh, just what I've been accustomed to and trying to implement some of the stuff that, um, you know, I've been doing for the last 15, 18 years and uh, just trying to help overall program. And so that's been really good. Uh, we've had some really good discussions. I think there's been some things that have come out of that that, that I've learned, that they've learned. And, um, you know, obviously, too, the, the swap over of Chevy uh, at KBM has been pretty seamless. Uh, guys over there have been really great to, to work with and help us through some of that stuff. And, um, you know, all the hardware of the trucks and all that is kind of the easy part. Uh, it's much of the software with the sim and the data and all that that's going to be, um, you know, a bit more challenging over time and trying to get all of that where, where we want it. Go right here. Daniel Olea de Zona Deportiva. Daniel, eh, ¿qué se siente cuando nombres de, en el automovilismo se nombra a Checo Pérez, Patricio Oddworth, pero cuando se habla de NASCAR, 
el nombre de Daniel Suárez es el que está trayendo a los hispanos, los latinos. Eh, ¿qué, es pa, ¿Qué se siente para ti? ¿Qué significa? Fíjate que yo creo que el automovilismo eh, mexicano está viviendo un momento muy, muy especial porque tenemos pilotos mexicanos en las categorías más importantes del mundo, como lo es Fórmula 1, IndyCar, NASCAR. Pero no solamente eso, cada una de, de las categorías y los pilotos que están en esas categorías están ganando carreras, lo cual es, es, es sumamente difícil de hacer. Eh, me siento muy orgulloso de ser parte de esta camada de, de buenos pilotos. Estoy seguro que, que, que no va a ser la última vez que esto va a pasar. Vienen muy buenos pilotos detrás de nosotros eh, en, en go-karts, en, uh, en óvalos y demás. Pero bueno, por, por, por este momento creo que nosotros, todos los mexicanos, eh, debemos estar muy orgullosos y disfrutar este momento, ya que, eh, que yo recuerde, nunca se había vivido antes. Entonces hay que disfrutarlo todos juntos y, y tratar de, de hacerlo aún más exitoso y que, y que dure lo más que posible. ¿Ya no? Hey, Cal, um, which half, which half, which half can you translate for us? Which half can you translate for us? Uh, muy poquito. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a driver meeting earlier. I think gambling was discussed. You've got a casino as a sponsor this year. Is there anything you learned that's new or different to the rules? No, nothing new or different to the rules. Obviously, uh, you know, don't do it and, um, you know, don't gamble on your own sport, your own self, um, don't give out insider information, all that sort of stuff. So nothing, nothing new, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Thanks. I'm from Vegas. Yeah. So you, you've, you've been in a casino or two before? I gamble every day of my life. <laughs> we'll go to Jeff in the back. Kyle, who do you think is the GOAT in NASCAR? Um, I don't know. I'd say there's probably a toss-up between five guys at the top, in my opinion. How, does it, how, how do you think that that gets sorted out? Like the era, car? It's tough. I think with the different eras, um, you always have the you know, the career statistics that that particular driver may have over another driver because of X, Y, and Z, right? Like Richard, obviously, um, many of his earlier years prior to probably 80 was 90% of his success, right? So, uh, but he still raced into the 90s. So like there was 12 or 13 years there where you could argue success wasn't great. But, um, you know, you look at Johnson, who obviously was great all the way through and then his last three years may be a little slower but um, you know Earnhardt obviously was um, you know short-lived not not quite able to to fully uh, execute his career um, and then I also look at guys like David Pearson who I would put at the top of that list who never won a championship but yet he could win every single weekend that he was out there always on the racetrack was always fast um, a lot of times never ran full seasons you know so um, I, I think that that's just It's always for, up for debate. Um, you know, I think in other sports, you can kind of say, in my opinion, that you could, there are one guy that is a GOAT, um, but ours is, to me, I guess, because it's insider information, it's hard to pick um, just one here in NASCAR. No, we have a couple more questions here, but we have to move on. Daniel, Ross, and Kyle, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks.